A living Prothean. That's correct, Admiral. But he's not quite what we expected. Commander, our scientists barely understand what they need to do here. If the Prothean can help us construct this device, we need his cooperation. Understood, Admiral. We're losing colonies faster than we can evacuate. We've never seen a force like the Reapers. He has, Admiral. Can he help us? I intend to find out. Good. Cerberus slipped up and gave us a new weapon. Don't let it go to waste. Hack it out. Cerberus was never going to be able to open the pod, though. Shepard, I need you down in the port cargo hold. It's about our new guest. I'm on my way. What's the problem? I've tried to make the room more accommodating, but they're not letting me talk to him. Apologies, Doctor. Contact protocol with a new species. Assume hostility. We had to dust off the regulations. But he's not new. I've spent my life studying Protheans. He was very distrustful of us, but because we shared that that bonding moment, that Prothean understanding bonding moment, I feel like it's okay. And especially because he kind of knows what we're going through right now. The exact same thing as what he was going through 50,000 years ago. He's gonna want to help. At ease. I don't think our guest will be a problem. Will he? That depends on you. I can sense fear in you. Anxiety and distress. The Reapers are winning. What do you mean, you sense? All life provides clues for those who can read them. It is in your cells, your DNA. Experience is a biological marker. Then what exactly did I experience back on Eden Prime? That was a hell of a flashback. The battle left its own mark on me. I communicated this to you. It can work both ways. Like your beacons? Yes. Which? I'm surprised people aren't shooting at him the moment he touched me. You found one. You saw it all. Our destruction. Our warnings. Why won't they heed it? Why didn't you prepare for the Reapers, human? It's Commander. And nobody could understand your warnings. The beacon nearly killed me. <sighs> then communication is still primitive in this cycle. We pieced together what we could and used it to stop a Reaper invasion three years ago. Then the extinction was delayed. Now we have your plans for the device. We're going to build it. Device? The weapon your people were working on. I'd hoped you could tell us how to finish it. We never finished it. It was too late. Then I take it you don't know anything about the Catalyst. No. I was a soldier, not a scientist. Skilled in one art, killing. What was your mission? Among my people, there were avatars of many traits. Bravery, strength, cunning. A single exemplar for each. Which are you? The embodiment of vengeance. I am the anger of a dead people, demanding blood be spilled for the blood we lost. Only when the last Reaper has been destroyed will my purpose be fulfilled. I have no other reason to exist. Those who share my purpose become allies. Those who do not become casualties. I agree to some degree, but, um, n not the whole degree. 
Nothing in our fight against the Reapers has been that cut and dried. Because you still have hope that this war will end with your honor intact. I do. Stand in the ashes of a trillion dead souls and ask the ghosts if honor matters. This silence is your answer. We found this at the dig site. I assume it belongs to you. It is a memory shard. Could it help us with the device? No. It contains only pain. But I will help you fight. And the last thing the Reapers hear before they die will be the last voice of the Protheans sending them to their grave. If you don't mind, I have a few more questions I'd like to ask. Here it comes. <laughs> I've written over a dozen studies on your species. I've published in several journals that... Amusing. Asari have finally mastered writing. <laughs> I'm sorry? Never mind. What do you wish to know? This guy's a bit of an elitist. As far as we know, Protheans, back in their day, they were like... The big thing. They were the best civilization, the most advanced culture, yada yada yada. So even today, even 50,000 years later, we're still kind of inferior to them, is probably what he thinks. Liara here would never forgive me if I didn't ask you. What was Prothean civilization like? Yes, I've always wondered. What sort of government did you have, and can you tell me about your religious beliefs, or perhaps the- We are dead now. What does it matter? <laughs> I'm sorry. Studying your history has been a lifelong passion of mine. When I was born, our empire was already at war with the Reapers. Oh. The first thing I remember was seeing my planet on fire. That is not a bad indication then, right? Because you... Okay, I'm gonna judge by your, your stature that... Okay, let's say you're 20 years old. That means you guys have been at war with the Reapers for 20 years. That means you didn't get destroyed by the Reapers for 20 years. Isn't that pretty okay? Compared to us right now, we're like one month in and we're dying. We're all dying. What was your civilization like before the Reaper attack? We were the dominant race of our cycle. We ruled the galaxy. My studies indicated you were the only race engaged in space travel at the time. I always found that curious. We were one empire composed of many subjects. All eventually called themselves Prothean. What if they didn't want to? They weren't given a choice. So you mean there are other Protheans who don't look like you? Are you saying you enslaved the other species? Any could oppose us if they wished. And if they had won, they would have ruled. Many tried. None succeeded. I had no idea Protheans were so... severe. It was by necessity. Very early we encountered the dangers posed by machine intelligence. They rebelled against us. We've had the same problem. They're called Geth. We could not allow the machines to surpass us. It was decided the only way to win was to unite all organic life within our empire. Did it work? For a time. The Metacon War. We were turning the tide. Until the Reapers arrived. Then we understood machines had surpassed us long ago, in ways we could never imagine. Uniting organics against Reapers? Sure. But I feel like right now the Geth are sort of an unknown factor, especially since with Legion and what we did last time too in Mass Effect 2, where all the so-called Geth heretics, we combined them into the, the Geth consciousness. We don't even know where Legion is right now. We've never seen a species with this sensory ability you have. It was common among my people, imparting experience through touch, the chemistry of life. Complicated ideas could be absorbed in seconds. That sounds very useful. We evolved as hunters. Reading a thousand details in our environment ensured our survival. I'm beginning to understand the beacons a bit more. Later, we developed technology to harness our ability. Information could be stored in certain objects through touch. Memory has its own biomarker, its own chemistry, as do knowledge and skills. The beacons could remember these things. Things like Reaper invasions. 
Yes, I can still sense the turmoil in you, witnessing the extinction of our empire. The fabric of your being was forever marked that day. So, could you read something about this room? Two fingers, or three. There was liquid, a form of incubation. The DNA of a Krogan who lived here. He was powerful, prone to violence. I'm impressed. His name was Grunt. And if he were my enemy, I would have given him a wide berth. There is great strength in his genes. Grunt will be honored to hear that. Back on Eden Prime, it looked like there were other stasis pods. What happened? The Empire had fallen, and we knew our cycle was lost. We were the final vanguard, the best soldiers left alive. So more of you were supposed to survive into this cycle? Yes. Under my leadership, a new Prothean Empire would have arisen. We would have commanded the races of your time to prepare for the next Reaper invasion. But traitors within our ranks, indoctrinated agents, betrayed us, and the Reapers discovered our plan. Just out of curiosity, how would you have commanded us? By leaving you no other option. You would have joined our army, or faced the Reapers alone. We've uncovered quite a few Prothean ruins. Were you observing our ancestors? Before the war, we cultivated species who showed potential. Eventually, you would have been offered a choice to join the Empire. But when the Reapers attacked, we ceased all study. We hoped they would see you as too primitive to harvest. Well, thank you, I think. <laughs> I mean, I guess that worked out because we're still here. What can you tell us about your own war with the Reapers? Many of the details were lost. The conflict lasted for centuries. Mm. Those that faced the Reapers in the beginning were long dead when I was born. There were memory shards, however, passed down from soldier to soldier. They gave us fragments of what happened. The war lasted centuries. This might be a good indication for us that we can hang on for a little bit longer. But I also get the impression that the Protheans were much better prepared than we were because at the very minimum, it seems like the entire Prothean race believed that the Reapers were a real threat and they were preparing. Whereas right now, nobody has heard anything. The best we can hope for is we can take the Prothean technology and do something with it. It's like not doing your homework until the very last day before it's due. Several years ago, we found a Prothean VI that called itself Vigil on the planet Ilos. He was the caretaker of a research project. During my life, Ilos was only a rumor. It was said we had cities there built on the ruins of a civilization before us, the Inusanon. If our scientists oh. did have a research facility, whatever they were doing was secret. Yes, Vigil said they wiped all traces of themselves from the records so the Reapers couldn't find them. The scientists eventually went into cryogenic stasis. More of my people survived? No, but they did stop the Reapers from taking control of the Citadel in this cycle. It delayed their invasion. I never saw the Citadel was captured long before I was born. Javik was born quite late stage in the war. So the, the stuff that we were seeing in the flashbacks, it looked like Ilos, but it's not. It was a bunker on Eden Prime then. Okay. How did your people wage war against the Reapers? Attrition. We fought them system by system, planet by planet, city by city. Entire worlds were sacrificed just to slow the Reapers down. Time they spent harvesting a population was time we could regroup. That must have cost you in the long run. Yes. Our own people would be indoctrinated, converted, then turned against us. But there was no choice. Mercy is not a weapon. It is a weakness. Why do you think your own cycle lost the war? What had been our strength, our empire, became a liability. All races conformed to one doctrine, one strategy. The Reapers exploited this. Once they found our weaknesses, we could not adapt. The subservient races became divided and confused. Then, it was only a matter of time. I'm happy to say our cycle is different. Most races cooperate, but they still remain unique. Then it may be your only hope. 
the one upper hand we do have. Is there anything more you can tell us about this device your people were trying to build? We heard only stories. They said our scientists were constructing a great machine that had the power to defeat the Reapers. You never saw it? By that point, the Empire was smashed into pieces. None of us knew what the others were doing. Well, if we don't finish it soon, the same will be true of us. I wish we had a Prothean scientist, but a soldier? Still better than nothing. It's first-hand Prothean knowledge that we're getting here. Thank you for talking with me. I never imagined actually meeting a Prothean. This has been amusing. Oh? To discover the most primitive races of my time now rule the galaxy. The Asari, the humans, the Turians. There's also the Solarians. The lizard people evolved. I believe they're amphibian. Is that not lizard? They used to eat flies. <laughs> Commander, you may count on me. I am known as Javik, though I still need time to recover. The shock has not worn off yet. I understand. This must be a hell of an experience for you. We're just glad to have you aboard, Javik. Wow. Slam, a Prothean. Slam, a Prothean. No, I mean, <laughs> a Prothean. Hmm. So this used to be Grant's room. I can't even recognize it. So much has been lost. So much has changed. And yet the Reapers are still here. For me, it was only yesterday. Our empire spanned the galaxy. Now we are only a myth. I'm recovering my strength. I will be ready soon. I require more time for the stasis to wear off. What is this table? It's like water? I require more time for the stasis to wear off. Okay, I won't disturb you. Hmm, if I remember right... Was this a DLC? Because I vaguely remember, I think back when Mass Effect 3 first came out, this DLC was kind of controversial itself too, because obviously the Protheans are such a critical and core part of the Mass Effect lore, and the fact that they gated it behind a DLC just didn't sit right with people. Like, people like Zaid and Kasumi, they're human, so it's it's nice to have them, but it's not, like, critical, but a Prothean? That's a little bit different. Nothing to report, Commander. Nothing okay. to report, Commander. Sounds good. Wow, well, we went to get an artifact, got an entire living being back. Hopefully, it's gonna be a big asset for us in the war. Mm, Liara's thrilled getting to see a live Prothean. Well, it doesn't seem like he's gonna know how to help us build the Crucible, but it's better to have him than not. Have you seen our newest crew member? You mean the biggest story in 50,000 years that I can in no way talk about? So, yeah, I've seen him. Just wondering. Yeah, you better not say anything. I don't like that he's on the same floor as you. You know, in the old days, they didn't have automat on cameras. Reporters had to cake on the makeup. Oh, we don't have that anymore? Okay. Do we need to talk, Commander? <laughs> not right now, Allers. Let me know when we do. Interesting. I can kick her off whenever I want? Just don't say anything about the Protheans, okay? Just stop. <laughs> I'm not sure what, like, what of what we do we can talk about publicly, but, uh, hold on. Don't you dare. They're everywhere. You just get taken, too. I can't just sit here doing nothing. Stay with me. Run. Get, get out of there. You can make it. No, I can't, Steve. But you can. Promise me. I love you. But I know you. Don't make me an anchor. Promise me, Steve. No, don't. I love you, but I know you. Don't make me an anchor. Promise me, Steve. No, don't. Commander. Sorry, didn't see you there. This is a recording from Ferris Fields. Months ago. 
I lost a lot of friends that day. I lost my husband. I grieved, said goodbye, made my peace. Do you need a vacation day? You don't seem fit to work today. You were talking with him when the collectors hit? I was organizing construction at a remote station a few clicks south of the main colony. Robert managed to get outside of the field the collectors put up. Instead of running, he called me. I'm sorry for your loss. He obviously cared a lot about you. He was afraid I wouldn't let go. But for him, I moved on. Or at least I thought I had. Then the invasion hits, there's no time. And the one thing I grab is this. I mean, what's the point of moving on with your life when everything is going to hell? Start thinking that way and we've already lost. Yeah, you're right, but... Well, to be honest... I never felt as alone as I do right now. This feels kind of fake. But I don't want to be punching a man when he's down. You're not alone, Steve. I'm here. Anytime you need me. I appreciate that, Shepard. I really do. But don't worry, Commander. When I'm in that pilot seat, I'm there 100%. I won't fail you. It's just the downtime between missions that's hard, you know? I know. Let's keep busy, then. I hope I didn't leave you hanging too long on that last Cerberus raid. I'm just glad we made it out in one piece. Been a while since I've seen a dogfight like that. Really missed my trident. ACM isn't really the Kodiak strong suit. Ah, oh, you're talking about the Cerberus Live one, right? Yeah, that was insane. You should have come earlier. Everything is in order. Everything is in order. Can I do anything with you? Oh! Hey there. Sorry, am I like blocking you? Sorry. Sorry. J James? I still can't believe it. A real live Prothean. <laughs> Doc must be over the moon. He could say that. I hear the guy's not all there. Exactly. <laughs> I can't imagine. Brought forward 50,000 years. Last of your kind. That's bound to screw with your mind. Yeah. Well, here's hoping he can help us with the Reapers. Keeping his body alive for 50,000 years is one thing, but his mind was intact for the past 50,000 years too. That's quite a technological marvel. Sounds like the Turians got hit pretty hard by the Reapers. Yeah, we're gonna go to them next. So, the Turians want us to go find one of their politicians, huh? Nice to see we're being put to good use. Well, maybe we'll get to kick some Reaper ass while rescuing the Primarch. I'll bet the elusive man's boiling in his brandy right about now. Took that Prothean right out from under him. <laughs> hey. But he was never gonna be able to wake him up, though. They don't have anybody with that sort of Prothean beacon knowledge. <laughs> okay. All right. Ah, we have two of these shuttles now. Wow, we're really expanding. Nice, nice. Procurement? Don't think we need to buy anything just yet. I still feel like I'm feeling my way through the combat system so far. We're hanging in there, and I don't have a particular preference on weapons yet. I like the shotgun. Yeah, but I don't know if we... Because, I mean, we're getting a fair bit of money, though. It's not like it's that bad. Maybe we'll get a second shotgun. But it, the stuff... Uh, uh, is this okay? Oh, and then I can keep upgrading. Hmm. One upgrade is okay for now, maybe. Yeah. Uh, crew deck? You all doing okay? Well, slowly but surely, we are filling our crew space again. Ah, <sighs> Dr. Chalk was. How are you doing? You fitting in? How are you, Commander? I'm okay. Could be better. How are you, Commander? Have we done anything about this thing here? No? Okay. We don't have any explanation for like where any of our crew went. 
It's kind of like back in the beginning of 2 where everyone just scattered, I guess. Are our crew members not gonna like say anything? Like back in 2, you know how they would normally say a few lines here and there? Maybe after we do the big mission. The private messages terminal has new correspondence. You talking about this? Nope. Broker terminal. This terminal contains non-essential correspondence from your allied forces. Uh. Dr. Tassoni has granted you access. Broker terminal, email, message from Operative Farron to the broker. I made contact with Tazik yesterday. The look on his face was priceless. He's not happy you put me in charge of scouting the Terminus systems, but he's doing a good job of keeping us alive. I've never seen so many pirates and mercs on edge. The black market's unreliable, and it's getting harder to make contact with suppliers. The Alliance won't be able to rely on it as a source of crucible materials for long, if things get worse. Some of the other operatives think we should cut our losses now, but I just keep asking them, when do the odds ever stop the broker? Farron. P.S. Hope you finally got our little friend Droney to stop saying Shadow and Broker out loud in the same sentence to anyone in sight. Yeah, yeah, I think we're, we're working on that. Prothean Notes 2186 Entry 1 The things this Prothean must have seen. If they had the technology to preserve someone for over 50,000 years, no wonder they were capable of building things like the device on Mars. I must give him time to get his bearings, but goddess, when will we get another chance to learn so much about their civilization? I'm sorry, Liara, that's not our priority right now. We gotta figure something out to get rid of the Reapers. 2171 to 2185. Okay, okay, a big long thing of notes. Glyph, remind me to clean up these old notes. Perhaps reviewing them will lead to something useful for the Protean device, Liara. 2171. The University of Ceres agreed to sponsor me at the Protean dig at Dretarop. Very exciting! Professor Hennel is heading the expedition herself. Maybe I can even ask her for her opinion on my thesis outline. Hmm? 2174. I believe Dr. Joshin was right to suggest the Protean artifacts we unearthed are from the Third Age, not the Fourth. What an embarrassing mistake. At least he seemed to approve of the rest of the paper. <laughs> Back when she was still in school. 2183. Part 1. I'm going on the Therum expedition. I never thought I'd gain the permission to visit the Prothean ruins there. But the University of Ceres must have secured the funding after all. Now to pack. Part 2. Oh, goddess, this human, Shepard, has the key to comprehending the Protheans on an instinctual, subconscious level. If only I could have been there when the commander touched the beacon on Eden Prime. I'll try to learn more about this cipher on board the Normandy. The involvement of the Reapers is troubling, to say the least. Hmm. 2185. I reviewed the old Shadow Broker's footage of the Collectors. It's chilling to know that they're the Protheans' as husks. At least nothing sentient could possibly remain after what the Reapers did to them. Ah. The Collectors are the Protheans' as husks. Oh, I guess that makes sense, because the husks we see these days look kind of like humans, I guess. Hmm. A Prothean. A living, breathing Prothean right below me. He's not what I expected. Me neither. He was a little... cold when I tried to talk. I understand the shock of waking up again. His species gone. But a Prothean, Shepard. There's so much he could tell us. That's why I put you guys on different floors, so you can't bother him. Feel free to look around. Feel free to look around. I will. This used to be Miranda's office. Yo, where's Miranda now? I'm so curious about where everybody is. Okay, nobody's doing any calibrations for now, so we're just gonna... Move on, I believe. Nothing here. Nothing here. Visit the cabin again. Where are my model ships? Yay! Oh, there's one missing! Oh, whoa, whoa, there's so many more spots now. Oh! Hey! There's no lid on that toilet. <laughs> okay, we have a visible washroom now for some reason. Hi! Oh, it makes a noise! That's cute. Still no fish. Don't know where to buy more fish. Javik! Javik. 
Dark Shadow, Lift Grenade, Pulse, Slam, Vengeful, Ancient. Armor bonus, power damage 25%. Oh, the different armors have different bonuses. Power damage 25. Power recharge 25. Oh, interesting. Power recharge 25. Power damage 25. Okay, so just between two, basically. Whoa. Power recharge 25. Same for James then. Weapon damage 25 or... Shields 25. The default is shields 25. All right. Okay. Well, hey, at least we have three people now, right? Seeing a Prothean in action, that's gonna be something. I don't think I need to change anything for the moment. Oh, no, just uh, go back to the normal one. Yeah. I'm kind of used to seeing it from the Shadow Broker stuff. After all my research from Liara, this isn't at all what I assumed the Prothean would be like. He's fascinating, but I guess we'll see. This is limiting from Javik. Water is significantly more intuitive in this clumsy apparatus. I am limited in how many carac- <laughs> Let him work with it. E.N. and Alert, new article in Eden Prime. Written by Diana, I guess. Alliance officials confirm a local resistance movement has successfully pushed Cerberus forces off Eden Prime. Cerberus attacked Eden Prime for reasons that remain unclear and set up facilities to occupy the colony. But after constant attacks from a united populace, Cerberus troops retreated. Alliance officials are sending in evacuation transports now to get colonists off-world before Reaper forces reach the colony. We owe this victory to the Alliance, resistance leader Edward Crabbe said in a prepared statement. The people of Eden Prime have always been ready to fight, but Alliance Intel gave us the tools we needed to push the Cerberus bastards off our planet. Many resistance fighters have said they plan to enlist and support the Alliance. Okay. That's the result of me doing the side thing on the Eden Prime mission, I guess? Okay... Should we look at this a little bit more now? The material obviously doesn't change the um, stats, I don't think. Health or shield regeneration? Health or shield regeneration? I don't know. Oh! Ariaki Technologies. Melee damage. No, we don't use melee damage enough. That's it. I don't even have anything I can change it with. This one might be an okay change, but I prefer the look of the N7. So I guess we will keep it for now. <laughs> Ooh. Cerberus Ajax armor. Nah. We're anti Cerberus right now. So I guess there's nothing to change after all. All right. See, I see. Those poor colonists on Eden Prime. First the Geth attack, now Cerberus. For what it's worth, our new crew member doesn't need a translator himself, but he shared a Prothean language tutorial program. Great. It was apparently designed for servant races being inducted into the Empire. Charming cultural clue. Great. <laughs> Commander. Commander. Yeah, awesome. See the feeds from Palavin? It's brutal. I'm amazed the Turians are holding. The birds don't quit when things get ugly. I'll give them that. The birds? Hey, soldiers, watch how you speak around here. That could probably be considered a racial slur in some parts. So a Prothean? A real live Prothean? Has Liara stopped bouncing yet? I'm guessing there may have been some bouncing. No, she hasn't. Commander? No. <laughs> it's gonna be a while. <laughs> Same as ever. Yo, did we put a bunch of, like, electrical stuff at the entrance? What? That seems to be a little bit dangerous. What if somebody shuts down our ship? Ugh. So no, that wasn't the Strike Abyssal stuff. We can go to Palavin, or I can go do this one. Uh, I feel like maybe since we're doing it anyway, let's just finish off all the side stuff and then we'll go to Palavin. How does that sound? Maybe let's read a little bit more of the Codex. Read, listen. 
The Reaper called Harbinger is believed to be the oldest and largest in the Reaper Armada. From the reaches of dark space, Harbinger managed to control the Collectors, a race of human-sized insectoid bipeds, as it sent them on a campaign to kill and gather humans from vulnerable colonies. The Collectors became a terrifying force in the galaxy, responsible for the murder of hundreds of thousands. Surviving colonists have described the tone of Harbinger's threats heard through the Collectors as they attacked as visceral and terrifying. Alliance Intelligence has tentatively identified Harbinger as one of the Reapers leading the attack on Earth. Ah, oh, I guess we're going to see this one specifically again. How have we identified that? Have they been talking to us? A myth common to several cultures in the galaxy, Reapers were once imagined as space monsters that consumed entire stars. Archaeologists who searched for the sources of such myths found little besides the themes of all-consuming devils that are common to primitive cultures. Although accurate information about the Reapers remains scarce, the galaxy now knows that the Reapers are not a myth. They are a real and devastating threat. Suddenly, all the Codex information denying the Reapers have to be updated. Sovereign was the first Reaper encountered by the modern Citadel races. Military leaders initially assumed that Sovereign was a Geth, or Prothean flagship, commanded by Saren Arterius, a rogue specter. Assumed. The truth was far more alarming. The massive ship was itself intelligent, and Saren proved to be under its control. The attacks by Sovereign against Eden Prime and the Citadel removed any uncertainty about the Reaper's technological superiority. Sovereign's formidable shielding and firepower allowed it to hold off the combined fleets of the Citadel, and its mass effect fields proved powerful enough to let the enormous vessel land on a planet's surface. Sovereign's mission, to open a mass relay that would transport the other Reapers from dark space, proved its undoing. During the Battle of the Citadel, Sovereign linked its consciousness to Saren's. When Saren's death corrupted the signal and shut down Sovereign's shields, Sovereign's destruction soon followed. It's very, very frustrating. When this happened, it felt like such a victory. And we had three extra years to prepare, but nobody did anything in that time. Ah, <sighs> three years? We could have done so much. Reaper indoctrination is an insidious means of corrupting organic minds, reprogramming the brain through physical and psychological conditioning using electromagnetic fields, infrasonic and ultrasonic noise, and other subliminal methods. The Reaper's resulting control over the limbic system leaves the victim highly susceptible to its suggestions. Organics undergoing indoctrination may complain of headaches and buzzing or ringing in their ears. As time passes, they have feelings of being watched and hallucinations of ghostly presences. Ultimately, the Reaper gains the ability to use the victim's body to amplify its signals, manifesting as alien voices in the mind. Indoctrination can create perfect deep cover agents. A Reaper's suggestions can manipulate victims into betraying friends, trusting enemies, or viewing the Reaper itself with superstitious awe. Should a Reaper subvert a well-placed political or military leader, the resulting chaos can bring down nations. Don't say that. Long-term physical effects of the manipulation are unsustainable. Higher mental functioning decays, ultimately leaving the victim a gibbering animal. Rapid indoctrination is possible, but causes this decay in days or weeks. Slow, patient indoctrination allows the thrall to last for months or years. Oh, I didn't even consider this because we've been fighting a war, but there are so many Reapers around now. What if somebody we talk to, somebody in a high position, one of the council members or something, they end up getting indoctrinated? That would be so bad. Oh no. The Citadel races have classified the known variants of Reapers into four types. Capital ships are Sovereign-class Reapers two kilometers in length. They typically target the Dreadnoughts, defense installations, and industrial cities of organic civilizations. Experts believe the Reapers harvest a single species of organics during each cycle of extinction to create these massive ships. Some capital ships are capable of launching small drones equivalent to fighters. 
destroyers are 160 meters long and in astounding numbers make up the bulk of the Reaper fleet. They engage cruisers and other smaller ships, as well as communications posts and enemy command centers. Research suggests destroyers are created from those species that are not harvested to make capital ships. Troop transports carry husks to unconquered planets and bring victims of the harvest to Reaper processing centers. They vary in length from 200 meters to one kilometer, but unlike capital ships and destroyers, do not appear to be self-aware. Instead, other Reapers operate troop transports remotely. Processors, also called slaughter ships, are mobile centers for mass DNA harvesting. Like troop transports, processors appear to be remotely operated by sapient Reapers. Such a weird concept. We drive ships, we have ships like starships and stuff, but the Reapers themselves are the ships. Two kilometers long, my god. Destroyers are made from those species that are not harvested to make capital ships. How does one become a species that doesn't get harvested? Because we're too primitive? Is that what they said? Like the keepers. Cannibals are frontline reaper units created from corrupted batarians. The nickname refers to their propensity to devour the bodies of fallen comrades. This triggers a biochemical process through which the cannibals spontaneously heal themselves and grow new chitinous armor. Great. The transformation also appears to give cannibals a greater awareness of their surroundings, leading to more strategic behavior and careful use of battlefield cover. Ew, what is going on? It's got like an extra head, like an extra face on the shoulder and... <sighs> Why can't you guys make more pretty looking things? These are all so ugly. The Reapers might be good at harvesting and whatever, but they're certainly not great designers. Husks are the aggressive, mindless foot soldiers of the Reaper armies. They are created by impaling either living or dead humans on mechanical spikes that rapidly extract water and trace minerals and replace them with cybernetics. These cybernetics reanimate the lifeless flesh and tissue, transforming the bodies into horrifying killing machines. The Reapers use large groups of husks to overwhelm the enemy. The husks' inability to feel pain as well as their tendency to attack in groups makes them particularly deadly adversaries. Maybe we can take solace in the fact that the husks don't even know what's happening anymore. It's not like you're killing someone you know. That could be considered a good thing, I suppose. <laughs> 